Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation GCSE Foundation Week 6 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation? Well, thousands of students all around the country have been sitting my revision quizzes on my Diagnostic Questions website. And I've gone into one of those quizzes and I've selected three questions. And they're the three questions that you can see on your screen in front of you now. But they are not any old three questions. These are the three worst answered questions by the thousands of students who've been attempting this quiz. And I've got five challenges for you. So challenge one is, can you get each of these questions correct? Then challenge two is, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered question is? Which is the most challenging one? And then question three, I wonder for each of these questions if you can identify what you think the most popular choice of wrong answer is. And then it gets really challenging. I wonder if you can explain why other students may have chosen these wrong answers. And finally, and this is probably the most challenging of all, imagine you were sat next to a student and they were absolutely convinced that their wrong answer was right. How would you convince them not only that you're right, but in a nice way, that they're wrong? So what I suggest you do now is you pause this video, you work your way through these three questions with my five challenges in mind, and then when you're ready, resume the video and we'll go through them together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one, right, let's do this. So to add a bit of drama, I'm gonna reveal the questions, but in descending order. So I'm gonna start with the least worst answered question, and it is, this question here on graphs. So this is the graph of y, y equals four minus a third x. Use the graph to solve four minus a third x equals two. Now here's the way to think about this. We've got this equation here, a third x equals two. Now we could go ahead and solve that equation, but it says use the graph to solve it. So the way to think about this is that graph already shows us this line here. That's the that's the purple line on the graph. This here equals two is like thinking about the line y equals two. The way to rephrase this question, the way I like to think about it, is that this question is actually saying, where does this graph, y equals four minus a third x, where does it intersect with this graph or this line, y equals two? Because that's all this equation is saying. It's saying, where does this equal this? Well. The way to look at that is, we've already got this line plotted. That's already been done for us. The challenge is, can we, are we good enough to be able to plot that line? Well, y equals two, that is a horizontal line that goes through the point two on the y-axis. It's always really important to remember that your y lines, the lines that start y equals and a number are your horizontal and your x equals are your vertical. You don't want to be getting those the wrong way around. So the question now becomes, where do those two lines intersect? Well, there they intersect there. And what's the X value? If I just have a look down there, X equals six. So I'm claiming the correct answer to this particular question is D, X equals six. Let's see if we're right. Whew, we are right, but look at that. Only 38% of students agree with us that that's the right answer. 24% of students think the answer's 12. Now, where, where does X equals 12 come from? Can you see it on that diagram? Well, there it is there. This is students who've not looked where it crosses the line y equals two, they've looked where it crosses the x-axis. Now that's really interesting that they've answered a question. The problem is it's not the question that's been asked. They've answered the question, where is four minus third x equal not to two, but to zero. You see the x-axis is the line y equals zero. And indeed, if I read one of these students' explanations, you can see that the line goes through the x-axis at 12. Also, it's interesting, if you have a look at B, look at that there. Um, some students, to or 22% of students, think the answer is 2.7. Now, where does 2.7 come from? Well, look at that here. That is if you start here on x equals 2 and you read up to the line, you get around about 2.7 there. But that's not the way to think about this. That isn't saying x equals two. This is saying, where does this line, where is this line equal to two? Where is it equal to y equals two? So it's all about getting your head around which way this equation goes. 
What a tricky question. And I'll tell you what, this is the best answer out of those three. It's only going downhill from here. So there's your next best answered question, if you will. Which of the following data is continuous? Now, to get our head around this question, we, know, we need to know the difference between continuous data, which this question's about, and essentially what is the opposite of continuous data, and that's discrete data. And as long as we know the difference between these two, it's not going to be too bad. So discrete data is data that's in definite predefined chunks or intervals. There's definite set things that this data can be, and it can't be anything in between those. So a really uh, easy one to think about here is uh, something like number of siblings. You can have one sister, two sisters, three sisters, four sisters. You can't really have 1.2738 sisters or 4.875 brothers and so on. It's in predefined set intervals. Now, that doesn't mean everything has to be a whole number when you've got discrete data. Shoe sizes is a classic here. You can have size two, two and a half, three, three and a half, but you can't have those funny ones in between 2.78321 and so on and so forth. Continuous data, well, you can have everything, everything in between. So a good example of continuous data here is something like height. Somebody can be 168 centimeters, but they can also be 168.012845. Uh, nine centimeters and everything in between every value is on the table every value is up for grabs with continuous data so this question is saying which of the following data is continuous well let's go through these number of siblings well i've just said no that's set it's predefined so it can't be that one hand span well that's a measurement how wide is your hand well your hand could be something really oops sorry could be something really uh, nice like an integer value 30 centimeters but it could equally, and it's probably a lot more likely to be something along these lines. Some really crazy decimal number, because it could be anything in between. So that is definitely continuous. So that's looking likely, but let's just check. Uh, shoe size, well, I've just said that could be size two, two and a half, three, and so on. It's predefined. Money in your bank. Now, you could have a whole number of pounds in your bank. So you could have 30 quid in your bank. You could also have pounds and pence, 30 pounds, 67 in your bank. But what you can't have are things like this, 30 pounds, 67, four, two, blah, blah, blah. It's one or the other. It's, it's predefined intervals determined by the lowest interval, which is your pence. So it can't be, it can't be that. So I think the only thing it can be is hand spam. Let's have a look. Well, that's right, but look at that, only 35% of students agree with us there. By far the most popular wrong answer, and there's more people think this and think that the answer's right, is money in the bank. And if you read it, you get this idea of it can increase and it can decrease. That's nothing to do with continuous. The amount of money can change over time. So this is a, a different interpretation of what continuous means. This student thinks the continuous thing means always moving. But it doesn't mean that continuous in this mathematical sense is all about whether it's in these fixed intervals, fixed amounts, or whether it can be anything in between. Um, and again, you get another idea here. There's no real limit to how high the number of money can go. Again, that's true. That's true. But that's not to do with continuous data. Which brings us to the worst answered question. And it is this one, a bit of algebra. So which of the following is a correct step to solve this equation? And we've got four options. Well, I think the easiest thing to do here is to go through each of these options in turn, and we'll see what the students attempted to do and discuss whether we think it's a valid thing to do. So let's have a look at this one, equals five. And let's compare it all the time to our original equation. So we have, in our original, we have x take three divided by five plus four equals one. Now what's happened here, that uh, plus four has disappeared and that one has changed to a five. So to make a plus four disappear, I think you've got to subtract four. But the problem is that stu the student hasn't subtracted four from the other side to keep it balanced. They've added four to the other side. So they've done the inverse and that's not valid. If you're going to do a mathematical operation to one side, you've got to do the same mathematical operation to the other side to keep that equation balanced. So it can't be A. Let's have a look at B, what's going on with B? So we've now got X over five plus four equals four. So what's happened here, that subtract three has disappeared from the left-hand side. 
and it looks like three's been added on the right hand side. So that's looking good. But wait a minute, it's not quite as simple as that. That x subtract three, that's not just a subtract three all on its own. It's been divided by five. It's wrapped up in this operation as well. So unfortunately we can't just pluck this minus three and uh, get rid of it by adding three because it's not just a three. It's a three divided by five. It's tangled up in this operation, in this term here. So unfortunately, that's not a valid thing to do either. If that negative three was just on its own, if it was x divided by five, take three, fine, no problem whatsoever, but it's wrapped up with this divide by five. Which brings us to c. What's happening with c? So we've got x take three, plus four equals five. So what's happened here? This time we, this student has attempted to deal with this divide by five. And what they've tried to do by the looks of things is they've attempted to multiply both sides of the equation by five. Now that's looking pretty good. X take three divided by five. If you then multiply it by five, you're just left with X, X take three. That's looking good. One multiplied by five gives you five. That's looking good. The problem, however, is this thing. The student has not also multiplied this plus four by five. You've got to multiply each of these terms. X take three over five, plus four and one. These separate terms have each got to be multiplied by five. So unfortunately, that's not valid either. Which brings us to D. Now we better hope D is valid. Otherwise, we're going to be in a bit of trouble here because we've exhausted all our other options. So what's happened here? So this time that plus four has disappeared again. So a valid way we spoke about to get rid of a plus four is to subtract four. And on the other side here, we started off with one, we subtracted four, one subtract four gives us negative three. So that's looking the valid one where four has been subtracted from both sides. Wow, that was a tricky one, right? And again, it's no surprise that students found this tricky. Only 32% of students got this right. What's the most popular wrong answer? It's C. Why do students think you can do C? You multiply five by both sides. But we've talked about the problem is the students have forgotten that you also need to multiply that plus four by five. Uh, you can see also that B is quite popular as well. The students adding three to both sides. But of course, that take three is tangled up with this divide by five. So it's not that simple. How did you get on with those three questions? Really tricky questions. Don't worry if you struggled. We've seen thousands of students also struggle with them. But as long as we can confront them and talk through them together, hopefully we'll be on the path to understanding them. Um, if this has whet your appetite for more, if you head to my website, diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019, uh, you can access loads of these quizzes and try them and it'll mark them for you. And if you're a teacher and you want to get your students set up answering these, it's all completely free. Head to ed.co.uk, go to the revision schemes of work. And if you need your help getting your students on the system, send us a spreadsheet with your students' names and their classes to hello at ed.co.uk. Hope you found that useful. I'll be back with another Beat the Nation soon. Take care and bye for now.